Hey everyone, welcome back and let's write some more neat code today. So today let's solve the problem, implement queue using stacks. If you don't remember what a queue is, it's a first in first out data structure. So for example, we have a few operations that we can perform. We can push elements into the queue. And in this case, they're gonna be integers. We can pop elements from the queue. And those are the main operations. We'll quickly go over these two, but just to keep things simple, we're gonna focus on these. Peak is basically just gonna return the element at the front and the other function is just to check if the queue is empty or not. So just to quickly simulate, suppose we do a push, we push one. Suppose we push again, two, push three, push four. Just to be clear, this is the front of the queue. This is the back of the queue. We push to the back, we pop from the front. So now if we were to do a pop operation, we'd want to remove one, then we'd want to remove two, etc, etc. So when we say we want to peak an element, we are just going to return the element from the front without popping it. Okay, not super complicated, but our job is to actually implement this data structure with two stacks. And if you don't remember what a stack is, it's kind of like this, except basically we'll push one, we push two, we push three, we push four. And then when we remove, we remove from the same side. So now we want to pop, pop four, pop three, pop two. We don't pop from the other side. This is called a stack and it's pretty easy to implement because removing typically from the end of an array isn't very difficult. We can kind of do a soft delete. Like if we were just maintaining an array and we had like, okay, the length of the array right now is four. Therefore, this is where the last element is. And we could delete this element without actually deleting it. We could just take this pointer and shift it. So stacks are pretty easy to implement. I go over this, I think, in my data structures beginners course, a lot more in depth if you're interested. But clearly the problem is in the queue, we remove from the other side that we push from. So removing from an array over here is not as efficient because if we want to remove this, we kind of have to push everything over so that ends up being a big O of N operation. And if you try to handle it with like the soft delete that I just talked about, you're gonna realize that the pointer here, like let's say we deleted all of these, now our pointer's all the way over here. Look at all that unused memory. Again, I go over stuff like this in the algorithms courses, but you don't need to know this super in depth, I think, to solve this problem. So back to the problem, given this type of data structure, two stacks, how can we try to solve this problem? And they actually mention in the problem description that it's possible for us to solve this in such a way that we use two stacks and the average case time complexity of all of these ends up being constant. And that's actually the hard part of this problem. So first we're gonna solve this problem without considering that requirement. Let's just solve this problem using two stacks in a naive way. So let's say this is stack one and this is stack two. We can only really push and pop from a stack. So naively, let's say we had this same sequence of values. Let's say first we want to push one. Next, we push two. Next, we push three. And let's say we do four as well. Now we want to pop. How do we do it? Well, for us to remove an element here, we have to kind of get rid of it. And at least with a normal array, we do that shift thing that I talked about. We shift every element, but they tell us with a stack, we can only use the stack operations, push and pop. So can we accomplish the same thing without doing this, basically without like indexing the stack? Cause that's not usually allowed with a stack. Yeah, we actually can. How would we do it? Well, it's probably not gonna be by pushing an element. You can guess that we probably wanna pop, pop, pop until we have the last element remaining. But we don't wanna get rid of these, then we lose what we had. Well, that's kinda of what the second stack is for, isn't it? So as we pop these elements, we can push them to the other stack in the same order that we're popping them. What happens when we do that? Let's just try it and then see what happens. Okay, we get four, then get three, then get two. Looks like the order of these was actually reversed. So when it comes to coding this up, instead of hard coding it such that we wait until the length of S1 becomes uh, equal to one so that we have the last element and then we can pop it, let's just take every single element here, pop it such that 
it gets pushed to this other stack. So now look at what we have done. We've reversed the order. Why does that help us? Because now when we pop, we're actually popping the correct element. Because remember, this is the sequence. This was the sequence. This is what the real queue would look like. One, two, three, four. We push here to the back of the queue. We remove from the front of the queue. So, so far so good. We now are able to pop this element here. But remember, we kind of reversed the order of these. So let's just take all of these, add it back to the first stack in like the same order that we uh, popped them. Well, in the opposite order, I guess, so that we now get two, three, four. So if we were to pop these, this is what we would get. And that's fine because now when we want to push to the stack, we can push in constant time. Just to review the solution I have shown you, pushing is constant time and popping, since we're popping from the other side, it's going to take big O of N every time to take all these elements, move them to the other array, and then move them back. That's going to be the bottleneck popping. But they claim that somehow we can get a solution in constant average time. So tell me, theoretically, how would that even be possible? Well, with two stacks, we know we really don't have a lot of options. We can only push or pop. And we already decided stack one is where we're going to push. That's constant time. Somehow, if we can make it so that stack two is the one that we're always going to pop from, which we kind of already did, that pop itself will be constant time. But the bottleneck was when we had to move all of these elements there and move them back. Do you see something that we could do? We don't know what the next operation is going to be. We don't know whether it's going to be a push or a pop. But if it were to be a pop, wouldn't we want to leave the elements like this? Because we did that operation. We did that big O of N operation. Why do we want to have to do it again? Because looks like the numbers are already here. If we want to pop again, we could do that actually in constant time. If we want to pop again, we could do that in constant time. Okay, but what if we wanted to push an element? Well, I guess we could still push an element to the first stack. Like for example, now if I wanted to add five to my queue, so I'm gonna put the five up here in the original queue. And then if I wanted to add five, I'd probably push it here. We've decided that's where the most efficient place to push is. Now, if I wanna pop again, what am I gonna do? Because originally we took all these elements and moved them there. Well, right now, it doesn't look like we need to do that. Again, look at the input sequence. We've removed one so far, but the next element we'd want to remove is two, and we can do that. It's right here. doesn't matter that we've added five because this second stack, the one that we're going to pop from, is non-empty. So what we can decide is pop from here, pop from here, and pop from here. If we want to pop again now, well, stack two is empty. So let's go look at stack one. Maybe it's empty too and we just can't do another pop, but it's not. So now is the part where we would take all these elements and then push them here just like before. And if it's one element, we do that. Perhaps it would be multiple elements and we do the same thing. They'd be added here in the opposite order. That's the key because when we pop from here and then push here, the stack gets inverted. That is the key here because remember, push here and hop from here. We can do that because the order is good for what we want to do and it works. Now, this isn't super complicated, is it? The hard part about this is the fact that we are trying to find a solution that is amortized or you could think of that as like the average case time complexity. If we do several calls to this queue, we want that to be constant for both pushes and pops. That is really the hard part about this problem. So let me kind of give you the intuition of why that is kind of guaranteed. Let's go through a few examples here. The trivial one is if we push, then we pop. We're going to end up popping this and moving it here and then popping it from here. So pushing is obviously going to be constant and then popping is going to be constant because we're going to move it here and then remove it. So if we just did push, pop back and forth, it would be fine. What if we instead had a long sequence of push operations and then we had a pop after that. Well, we kind of showed that earlier. We'd have a one, two, three here. Then we'd invert the order three, two, one, and then we'd start 
popping. If you were to look at the total number of operations that happened here, it looks like we have like about two operations or maybe three operations because for each element, we're pushing it to the first stack. We're popping it from the first stack, pushing it to the second stack and then popping it from the second stack. So I guess actually four operations for every single number. But what does four times big O of N uh, or just N equal? That's still big O of N, right? That constant four doesn't do anything to us. So it looks like having a long sequence of pushes and then a pop is not bad. And I kind of just realized I already showed you if we had a long sequence of pushes and then a long sequence of pops, because again, we'd push each element and then pop it and then push it here and then pop it. And remember, each of these operations is constant time. So even though this would be constant time, uh, this would be constant, this would be constant, the pop itself, the first one would technically run in big O of n time because we'd have to move all of these here. Then after that, every pop would be constant time. And again, I just showed you, we're only gonna do it four times for every single number. So it's not gonna be super inefficient. Now you might be thinking, what if we just had a single push and then a bunch of pops came after that? Well, that's not really possible. We can't pop if we haven't pushed anything, remember? So that's the idea here. Again, average case time complexity of push and pop is gonna be constant. I wanna quickly go over empty. How do you think we're gonna resolve that? Because we are working with two stacks. We would just check if both of them are empty, we return true. If that's not the case, let's return false. What about peak? Well, remember when we pop, we're popping from stack two. So when we're peaking, we should just take the element without necessarily removing it. And then we can return that element. What if though stack two is actually empty? We haven't pushed anything to it yet. What if we just have one, two, three, four in the first stack? Well, let's have an if statement in our code to check for that. If stack two is non-empty, return the last element from stack two. If stack two is empty, return the first element from stack one. And now that I think of it, we're technically not allowed to index a stack. So I guess probably the best way to handle this would be kind of the same way we handle the pop. So I guess uh, depending on the language you're using, we can do that same operation. So that's what I'll do, I guess. So instead of that whole if statement thing, let's just handle it this way. Okay, now let's code this up. Let's declare our two stacks. I'll call them the same thing, stack one and stack two. Technically, these are arrays or dynamic arrays in Python, but we'll just be using them as a stack. So let's just keep in mind, we can either push to it, we can pop from it, or we can look at the last element in the stack the top element. Uh, by the way, if you're wondering how I figured this out, I'll keep it real with you. I actually was able to solve this problem because I had solved it before in the past. Otherwise, I don't know if I would be able to. But in pushing, let's take stack one and append X to it. That's the easy part. Okay, popping, this is where things get tricky. Ultimately, we want to return from stack two. We wanna take stack two, pop the last element and return it. And by the way, they guarantee to us that pop is only gonna be called if we actually have an element in the stack. We don't have to worry about edge cases where the stack is empty, or rather the queue is empty, sorry about that. Uh, same thing with peak, we can't return the front of the queue if the queue is empty, so we don't even have to worry about that. Now it's possible, like I said, that stack two is actually empty. So if not stack two, then let's take everything from stack one and move it to stack two. So while stack one is non-empty, take to stack two, we want to append the last element from stack one. So pop that element. That's perfectly valid in a stack. So stack one dot pop. Great, we have completed pop. Like I said, this is gonna be pretty similar to peak. I guess there's gonna be a bit of redundant code. If you wanna move it into a helper function, you can. I probably won't be doing that. The only difference between peak and pop is that instead of popping the element, we just wanna return it. So think of it like this, return self.stack2, the last element. In Python, I don't know if top is a method. So the way to get around that is just to return the last element, which you can just get with the negative one index. And we're allowed to do this because technically this is top. It is pretty much a real stack operation. Now it's possible, again, that stack two might be empty. If that's the case, let's just take everything from stack one and move it to stack two before we execute this. So instead of writing it out, I'm just gonna copy and paste it like that. Done with this. And the only thing left for us is the easy part, thankfully. So let's implement empty. We just need to check that both of the stacks are empty. So return 
let's say length of stack one, and we're gonna need length of stack two. And we could check that they're both equal to zero, or I guess a slightly clever way to do it would be just to take the maximum of both of these and then check if that's equal to zero because it's not like the lengths are gonna be negative. If even the maximum is equal to zero, we can assume that the other one is also equal to zero. So that's the entire code. I will admit this is a bit hard for an easy problem, at least to come up with the amortized approach. That part is definitely not easy, but you can see on the left that this works and it's pretty efficient. If you found this helpful, please like and subscribe. Check out Neatcode.io for more resources and I'll see you soon.